This is the next video in our series on simple linear regression. We're going to speak to hypothesis tests surrounding simple linear regression. So let's start with writing out the model mathematically because we're going to need to identify the component pieces we often perform hypothesis tests on. So what we're invariably trying to do is predict some response variable y. I'm going to put a hat on y to say what we're actually doing is trying to make guesses about the mean value of the numeric response variable y based on some numeric explanatory variable x. In the world of statistics, we essentially are looking at a line over some numeric explanatory variable x. What happens uh, in the world of statistics is we use different symbols. <laughs> I don't know why everybody who writes a line as an equation needs to use different symbols, but we do. So beta naught is going to be the intercept. And in order to predict y, that is calculate y hat, we're going to estimate the population intercept from data and we'll calculate beta hat naught. And beta one attached to through multiplication to the numeric explanatory variable x is the slope. So we have two coefficients, they're called, beta naught with a hat on it as estimated from the data is the intercept, and beta one is the slope with a hat on it to say we are going to estimate whatever the population slope is from the data we have. So the intercept, remember, is the value y hat takes on, that is your estimated response variable, when x is equal to 0. Because look, if x is equal to 0, then 0 times anything is 0. And so you're left with just beta naught. And beta 1 as the slope is really just the part that tells you, positive or negative, is the line pointing down and how steep is that line. So in the world of hypothesis testing surrounding simple linear regression, what we do is test the intercept and the slope separately. We have a null hypothesis for the intercept that asks, is the true population intercept, that is the one without the hat, equal to zero? And we set up the alternative as the intercept, that same population parameter, not equal to zero. And then remember, even though R will happily help you fit this hypothesis right off the bat, you should, before you even get to the data, set up your hypotheses and your level of significance. Okay. It doesn't make much sense initially for why we test the intercept equals to zero. But in terms of the slope, I think it does make a lot of sense about why the default number in hypothesis tests for simple linear regression is equal to zero. So the same sort of setup goes. We are interested in testing the population parameter, the one without the hat, being equal to zero. And in the alternative, you have the same parameter and that same value as in the null. And we just change the symbol that relates the two. We'll set up our level of significance before we even look at the data. So these are the two hypotheses that we're going to work through in an example in R. Before we do that, I'm just going to remind you of two things. The first is, why is zero so important in terms of the slope? And consider, if we had some data where the slope was zero, you'd essentially have a line like this. Here is some data that would give you an estimate of the slope equal to zero. And if the slope were equal to zero, there would be no relationship between x and y. As x changes, y does not change. Because a slope of zero tells us that there's no relation between x and y, it's common to test. Is there a numerical relationship between x and y identifiable based on the theory of statistics and some data. Is there a relationship between x and y? 
That's what this hypothesis is asking. Is there a relationship? between x and y. If the slope is different from 0, there's some sort of linear relationship. If the slope is seemingly not differentiate, can't be differentiated from 0, then there doesn't appear to be a relationship. OK, so the other piece I'm going to remind you about before we get into our example is my favorite phrase, when the p-value is low, reject h O. When the p-value is low, reject HO. That is, when the p-value is low, reject HO in favor of the alternative. There appears to be a relationship between X and Y. When you fail to reject HO, we have evidence that there is no relationship between X and Y. OK, I covered all my pieces. Let's jump into R. So here in R, I'm continuing with the same example about the Elmhurst College data set, where we're trying to predict gift aid based on family income. And this line is establishing for us estimates of gift aid based on the data we have. So that is the the how I just drew my cursor over the screen. If family income is $100,000, then we estimate based on this line, which consists of beta hat naught plus beta hat one times family income, we estimate gift aid to be uh, $20,000. Wow, that's quite a bit. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so there it is. After fitting the plot, and the model. Here is the fit model. We call summary on the um, fitted model, and we get output that looks like this. Each line here corresponds to one of the hypotheses I drew earlier. So the highlighted line here corresponds to the hypothesis about the intercept, um, which we established as beta subscript zero, beta naught. And notice that R calculates for us the standard error. And from the standard error, R calculates for us a test statistic. And from the standard error, and from the test statistic, R calculates for us a p-value. So in fact, R on this one line has presented to us all the necessary components to calculate a p-value and thus conclude the hypothesis test for the intercept. This sequence of symbols here is saying that the p-value is so small, it's less than the computer can actually estimate. You should, anytime you see something like this, essentially just treat the p-value for the intercept as some number like this, 0. 0.0001. That is basically the smallest p-value you should ever report. So in this case, we're going to ask, is 0. 0.0001 less than our level of significance? It is. So when the p-value is low, reject HO. So in this scenario, we reject HO in favor of the alternative. We have evidence, based on the example in R, that the intercept is not equals to 0. So your statistical conclusion, based on this hypothesis test, implicit to this line of output from R suggests that we have evidence that the intercept is different from zero. And indeed, look how high that intercept is. Great. This next line of code repeats the hypothesis test for the slope. You take your estimate and you divide it by, well, actually what you do is you take your estimate, you subtract off the value in the null hypothesis, which is zero. And then you divide it by the standard error. And look what number you get out. You get your test statistic out. You can do that with the intercept just the same. And based on the test statistic, R calculates for you a p-value, from which you can ask, is that value less than our level of significance? It is. 
when the p-value is low, reject HO. So over here, we reject HO for the slope, just the same as we did for our level of for our intercept, and we conclude there is a statistically identifiable relationship between X and Y. This is what that relationship looks like. So we have evidence based on these data that the slope of this line accurately quantifies a linear relationship between family income and gift aid. And based on a previous video, we know how to interpret that linear relationship already. So this video essentially walked us through the majority of the output of the function summary as called on the output of the function LM. So when you summarize a linear model in R, this is the standard output you get. This is often the most important part of the output for simple linear regression because it includes p-values to test both the intercept and the slope. And when the slope identifies, uh, when the data identify a slope that is significantly different from zero, we then have evidence to believe that there is a statistical linear relationship between an explanatory variable and a response variable. You should try to interpret in whatever example you get going for simple linear regression, you should try to set up and conclude hypotheses based on these two p-values you get out of your example from simple linear regression.